Hello and welcome to Get to Know Science. This video is about forces and braking. A car traveling at constant velocity has these forces acting on it. This blue arrow represents the force from the engine pushing forward and this red arrow represents the resistive forces, things like friction and air resistance. If you want to speed up, you push the gas pedal or the accelerator pedal and that increases the forward force from the engine so you speed up. If you want to stop you take your foot off the accelerator and you press the brake and that will increase the resistive forces from friction. What happens is the brake pads which is this thing here clamps down onto the brake disc so if you look at a, a wheel of a car and you take away the actual wheel what you'll see is the brake disc and the brake pads. So when you press the brakes, the brake pads, it's actually this thing here, clamps down onto the brake disc and the friction between them transfers the car's kinetic energy into mostly heat energy and a bit of sound as well. The faster the car is going, the higher the braking force needed to stop it. Also the more mass it has the larger the braking force needed. So a fire engine needs a larger braking force than a normal car simply because of its larger mass. Now of course when you press the brake the car does not stop immediately but actually it carries on moving a while while it comes to a stop. Imagine you're driving a car and you see something that causes you to do an emergency stop. Something, for example, like a giant rabbit. The first thing that has to happen is you must react to the obstacle and then press the brakes. It takes a fraction of a second for your reaction to happen and that's called reaction time. But in that time, the car has continued moving forward. This distance travelled is called the thinking distance. It's the distance traveled during your reaction time and typically reaction times range from about 0.2 seconds to around 0.9 seconds. So that distance you've traveled during your reaction time is called the thinking distance. A number of factors can affect your reaction time such as drugs and alcohol, such as distractions and this is why you're not allowed to be on your phone when you drive and also tiredness. So these three factors can affect your reaction time and therefore your thinking distance. Also the faster you're moving the longer your thinking distance and this is simply because you will travel further during your reaction time if you are moving faster. So another factor here is speed. It doesn't affect your reaction time but it does affect your thinking distance. Once you've pressed the brake pedal, the car will slow down and come to a stop. The distance travelled during this time is called the braking distance. Factors that affect the braking distance are those that affect either the condition of the road or the condition of the car's tyres or brakes. So if the road is icy or wet or if the tyres are worn or if the brakes are worn, then your braking distance will increase. And the final factor here just as it was with thinking distance is the speed of the car and we'll explain a bit more about that later on in the video. So if we combine these two distances, the thinking distance and the braking distance, their sum is called the stopping distance. As you can see from this image, both the thinking distance and the braking distance and therefore the overall stopping distance are affected by the speed of the car. The faster you go, the longer these distances are. Here are some typical distances according to speed. And you can see here that increasing the speed has a very large impact on the braking distance as compared to the thinking distance. The thinking distance will get longer, but the braking distance increases much more. To explain the effect of speed on the braking distance, we need to go back to what I said in the beginning of the video. In the beginning of the video I said that the faster the car is traveling 
the higher the braking force it needs in order to stop it. This is because the job that the brakes are doing is they are transferring the car's kinetic energy into thermal energy by using the force of friction. So work is being done by the frictional force in order to transfer this energy and we know that work done equals energy transferred. So if the car is traveling faster it has more kinetic energy so the brakes must apply more force in order to transfer the energy and stop the car. So the faster the car the higher the braking force needed. And because F equals MA which is Newton's second law that also means that the car will decelerate more if there is a larger force. Now depending on the speed this could cause the brakes to overheat due to all of that friction or it could cause the driver to lose control. So braking heavily when you're driving really fast can be quite dangerous. Okay so that was a video on forces and braking. I hope it was helpful. As always make sure you like, comment, subscribe and share and I'll see you all in the next video. Thanks for watching.